what I want to talk about today is the technology, how it works, but also what it's doing to kind of revolutionize a lot of industries from manufacturing to design to creativity, such that the way that we will perceive the products around us is going to fundamentally change in the coming years. Um, so we can go to the next slide. To do that, though, we have to start with where we've been to date. Um, and that relies a lot on mass manufacturing. So mass manufacturing uh, lets you make really complex products like laptop computers and cars and, you know, yeah, there we go, cars. <laughs> um, however, we're limited uh, by the amount that we can actually customize these products. So mass manufacturing caters to the lowest common denominator. You have to sell 100,000, 1 million to achieve scale such that this cost is actually possible. So as you can see here, you know, people are starting to customize the products that, uh, that we live with. Um, whether you put, you know, a, sorry, can you go to the next slide? Whether you put a decal on your computer, you know, I have Banksy on the back of mine and it makes me feel great every day, um, or you put your face on a coffee cup, um, that's where customization started. And then, you know, certain innovators came in like Nike with Nike ID and you can really customize the shoe more specifically. But, it's been limiting, um, particularly if you don't want to invest a lot. So if you do want to invest, you can oh, go back one more. You can you know, pimp your ride and really <laughs> put a lot of money and time into making something just right. 3D printing, um, or some other people call it additive manufacturing, takes designs and you build it up layer by layer from a digital file. So you take a design that's used typically made in CAD, so Google SketchUp or Rhino or Autodesk, um, upload it to a website and either print it at home on a home 3D printer or send it to a service like ours and get it you know, delivered to your home. And what that means is that if everything to date has been needing to serve a mass market in order to you know, actually reach customers that you have had to had, you've had to have 10,000, 100,000, now you can actually make one and you can have that cost and that quality rival what you get off a shelf. How does Shapeways fit in? Um, we're both a manufacturer and a retailer. So we're a website where anyone can make, buy, and sell their designs, um, make, sell, make, buy, and sell their own products. And after this, um, our friend will be telling a little bit about his own story um, kind of doing this. But what this is empowering is a, a term we're using called creative commerce. So typically, you know, you think about a marketplace and you have people who are buying things and people who are selling things. Um, and the making process is super far removed from that. You know, typically it's across the river, across an ocean, um, sometimes in your backyard, but, but rarely. And now it's happening that you have an idea, you make it, and then it's in your hands or it's in your customer's hands. Um, and there's a lot less waste, a lot, a lot more efficiency, um, and actually people are taking part of that process. It's actually really perfect that I'm going up after Shapeways. We're like, I think we're like the poster boys for Shapeways, literally. Um, maybe about a year ago, um, a year and a half ago, I'm, I have training as an industrial designer. And me and a friend of mine from grad school uh, and two other guys were like, we wanted to make real things. We wanted to make objects. My, my digital friends, I think they were tired of electrons. And they were like, we want to do something with atoms. And I'm like, guys, look, atoms are expensive. Right? No, they are. Like these guys were software guys, and you know, adding a new page to your your website is a marginal cost. Right? Shipping atoms around the world costs money. They have friction. They have weight. Right? And it costs things to move them around. And so I said, look, you know, we should we could think about workable materials. Um, we can think about things that we can get made locally. Things in wood, um, glass, metal, fabric. These guys wanted to make things that we could give to our grandchildren, things that would literally last forever. And I had actually had some familiarity with, with, with Shapeways. 3D printing is something that sort of came into my life gradually. While I was in grad school, we got a Z Corp printer, and it changed the way all of us did our work. Exactly what um, Corinne was talking about. Like, as soon as we could put our designs in our hands, Everyone wanted to print their designs as quickly as possible and start to play with them and develop them and iterate them. Um, the real reason that we, we do this and do it through Shapeways is that we can make one at a time. We made an object, we put it on the internet, we, we started a brand, and then we started selling them. We had one, we took a picture of it, we liked it, and then we sold more of them. And as people bought them, we manufactured more of them. So I have in my hand a, um, 
a necklace, it's matte gold. The matte gold is ridiculous, right? It's, you know, gold's a little retro, right? I think this, it's a headphone necklace. It started off as a pair of cufflinks. And we thought it'd be really cool to make a necklace that was also headphones. So you could like wear your headphones around your neck all the time, right? For some reason, we got it printed in matte gold instead of the shiny gold. And uh, one of the creator's girlfriends just loved it. She's like, the matte gold is hilarious. I, I want it. And so we put it on the website. And if people buy it, they buy it. And if they don't, they don't. We made one. We like it. We get to wear it. And we can make more whenever we want to. So there's three main types of 3D printing. And I, if you guys don't know this, this is really good to know. Um, FDM, Fused Deposition Modeling, the maker bots that sell for about two grand use FDM. They, there's a spool of plastic that gets shot through a, a heated nozzle, like a glue gun. If Everybody's used a glue gun, right? Because they're awesome. And when you squirt that, that, that solid rod of glue through the heated nozzle, it melts and then it solidifies. That's basically what an FDM machine does. The platform moves around or the nozzle moves around and then it builds up as it goes. So that's FDM. Selective laser sintering is awesome because it uses lasers. Yeah, exactly, lasers. And you can do metal laser sintering using titanium powder. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the N12 bikini was made using laser sintering of nylon. Isn't that right? Yeah, so what's really cool though, and Duan was telling me this, the patents for laser sintering are gonna go public in about two years, which means that home 3D printers in the next three to five years will be awesomer. So hello, my name is Mary, and um, I'm one half of Continuum Fashion. This is Jenna, she's in Boston. And we're known for making a 3D printed bikini. This we call the N12. We did this last year. We feel like it's so old now, but people feel it's still interesting. Um, here's the close-up shot, you know, you get to look at bikini girls at a, you know, like a conference, that's why we're popular, I guess. But anyway, um, the bikini was the, the press thing, but the technology and the design behind it was really a textile system that could be 3D printed. Um, N12 is the textile, not, not just the bikini. More specifically, I wanted to do this one thing where, you know when you go to the store and you see some shoes you really like, but then they're like five inches tall. So what if you could just like adjust them a little, you know, go for the three inch heel, turn it into a little bit more of a flat, like a little like kitten heel, and then go all the way up to a stiletto pump. Um, this like, we got about this far, it's not fully up on the web yet, but we, we feasibly could let people order this, um, just like kind of slide it over, and then when they order, we'll, we'll run it and then generate a new 3D model, send it off to Shapeways and print. Yeah, we, we use Shapeways, yeah. <laughs> so before the 3D printing, this was the first Continuum project. It was actually my thesis from grad school. And the idea was like, well, how do you design a clothing collection that's truly digital? And well, why not do clothing just as software and let people draw their own designs? Um, so this, this is like an app, or it's a web app. Um, you can actually go on our website, you know, like right here at the URL, Continuum Fashion, oh, continuumfashion.com, and you can try this. Um, My name is Sandra Galt, and I'm the CEO and founder of Shulogique. We are a high-tech fashion company that uses 3D imaging technology to scan women's feet and make high heel shoes that fit. So if you want high heel shoes that are beautiful and you want them to fit you biomechanically, we actually do that. And we've been under development for a while and we're starting to stick our toe out into the industry and start talking about uh, what we're doing and how we do it. How do you take 3D imaging even further? I'll scan their feet I'll get over 10,000 different measurements. We've created an algorithm that actually maximizes their measurements with the style of the shoe they select and create a mold. At the same time, after I've scanned their feet, we let them design the shoe using our 3D imaging tools. And they can actually design the tool right while they're getting their feet scanned. And then with augmented reality, we can show them what it looks like on their feet and they can swivel their foot, and they can see an actual shoe on their feet. Kind of cool, isn't it? And it's amazing to me to see what happens when a woman gets her foot scanned. She learns a lot about her feet that, quite honestly, she never knew before. 
and I've seen thousands of feet. And I can see now a lot of things I never saw before. And we actually share that with them. So they learn what their real size is, and they ask us questions. And we tell them, and this is our philosophy, the best form of transportation that everyone is born with is our left and right feet. So we should take good care of them. What you see here is our wonderful model has put on these really funky socks. We call them Spider-Man socks. <laughs> yeah, people want the socks. People even steal the socks. We recycle, by the way. We rewash them, and, and you can reuse them. She stands on this platform, and trust me, it, does, it is not a scale. It does not do weight or height. And we use a digital camera, goes around, takes pictures, and we put that together. And then within less than five minutes, we actually have a true 3D image of the foot in over 10,000 different measurements.